When we talk about the future of Blackwater as a company, we realize that their days in Iraq may be numbered. The company may choose to leave or the company may be forced out of Iraq. But in reality, Blackwater sort of got what it needed from Iraq. It, it took in over a billion dollars in U.S. taxpayer funds. It got a reputation as being the sort of macho, bad guy, cowboys of the war zone. Uh, but the fact is that Blackwater was paid to do a job and they did it very well, albeit through killing a lot of Iraqi civilians in the process of defending the most important people in Iraq who unfortunately are not Iraqis but rather uh, U.S. occupation officials. Blackwater recently created its own CIA called Total Intelligence Solutions and it's headed by a man named Jay Kofer Black who is uh, one of the biggest thugs to serve in any U.S. government position. He was the head of the CIA's counterterrorism division uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 and was at the center of some of the most brutal and violent policies of the administration. He ran the CIA's extraordinary rendition program, the government sanctioned kidnap and torture program. He now is running Blackwater's private little CIA. What they say is we can bring CIA type services to the corporate boardroom. So what this means is that the careers of veteran CIA operatives, their networks of contacts, their knowledge of sensitive U.S. intelligence is essentially now on the open market for bidding, not just by the U.S. government, but by foreign governments and corporations. This is an extraordinarily dangerous development, and Blackwater, once again, is on the cutting edge of it. I, in fact, I think this is one of those issues that's not about left or right, liberal, conservative, Republican, or Democrat. When you look at the U.S. intelligence apparatus, 70% of intelligence spending is outsourced to private companies. That means that for-profit corporations who don't necessarily have the best interests of the United States or its people or the world at heart uh, now are, are being brought into the fold where they're simultaneously working for the U.S. government and for other corporations and potentially other governments, meaning that national security interests of the United States could be put on the competition block against the higher paying clients from Fortune 500 corporations. Over the last 10 years, they've built up what can, I think, accurately be described as a parallel infrastructure to the U.S. national security apparatus, the intelligence division, the maritime division, the security division, the domestic operations division. The fact is that until we address the root of the problem, and that is intimately linking corporate profits to the war machine, and then linking those two things to the campaign finance system in the United States, we are never going to take on what President Eisenhower identified as one of the premier threats of our time, uh, and that is a threat of unchecked power within the military-industrial complex.